Welcome to the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. I'm your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking about the truth about MSRP and boat dealer margins. This is a question that actually came up on um, our, our kind of, I'll call it a members area, just where we have all of our videos, the free Boat Buyer's Toolkit, the calculator, as well as some other uh, videos that are, are not on YouTube that I put up. And one of the questions that they asked is, what's the deal with MSRP and pricing and what's a regular discount that I could expect? So we're gonna talk about pricing strategy by dealers and OEMs. Uh, OEMs is the same thing as manufacturer, dealer and manufacturer incentives, when to get the best deal and impacts on boat pricing. What has an impact on what's going on with boat pricing? So as always, you can grab your Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Toolkit at BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. You can pick that up for free. We have just beeped it up for 2021 and we have put that out. It's now available as the 2021s are, are starting to hit dealers right now. So we've updated that. It's a 20 page toolkit that's got checklists, questions to ask, uh, some information on financing, trades, boat insurance, and much, much more, as well as a calculator on the real cost of boat ownership that gives you a complete picture. So you can pick that up while it is available. So let's start with the pricing strategies that are used by dealers and OEMs. So the first thing I'll talk when it comes to pricing is the manufacturers are OEM, original equipment manufacturer. So that would be Sea Ray, Bennington, Cobalt, Sea Pro, Sea Hunt. Um, you know, any of any of those are OEMs or manufacturers. The OEMs get a dictate to the dealers how to handle pricing. Not necessarily what to sell the boat for, but how to handle pricing. The OEMs are going to be the ones that typically provide the MSRP, the manufacturer's retail price, suggested retail price. So that's usually, not always, but set by the manufacturer. Sometimes a manufacturer won't give an MSRP and a dealer will just make one up, which makes this all the more confusing to put generalizations. But by the end of this video, you're going to know how pricing works. You're going to have a pretty good feel and you're going to be in a good position uh, to deal on a new boat. So the OEMs typically, as of right now, a majority of them are saying you cannot put price on the internet. We don't want price on the internet. And if you do put a price, it has to be MSRP, uh, but some of them don't even allow that. No, no pricing at all online. That's set by the manufacturers because they don't want dealers to put lower prices and drive the price of the boat down. Dealers are also, our manufacturers are also, in my mind, their, their mindset is off that they wanna protect that price, so you have to go into the dealership to look at the boat and to get the price. Unfortunately, in today's world, it's, I think it's a smarter idea for them to put the pricing out there, but that's nobody is, is um, coming to me for that answer. So here's the three pricing strategies that you're going to find. The first one is manufacturers that set a high MSRP, so typically something with a 30 or 35% margin uh, to what the boat costs. And then they provide a big discount. And typically when you're seeing a pricing sticker, let's say a boat show, that discount is taking their margin to 25% to as low as 15, maybe even 13%, depending on the on the boat, that the margin that the, the dealer is making, okay? On the next level, there are some manufacturers, and it'll even change as you'll see by the examples I have coming up, they'll set a lower MSRP and have a smaller discount to retail. You'll typically see that in kind of the, the mid-tier boats where the, they, if that MSRP gets out there, maybe they'll let the, the dealers put the MSRP online or show it. They want that to be a smaller amount so it doesn't scare people off. And then because that MSRP is only at a 25 or 30% margin, they will only have a smaller discount because a dealer, whether you like it or not, a dealer has to make money to be there to support you. And if you've watched any of my videos before, and I encourage you to go watch all of them, there there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views on all of our videos, go check those out. 
because I believe that the relationship with the dealer, especially if you're newer to boating, because of because of a lot of reasons we won't get into now, that relationship with the dealer is incredibly valuable, and you want that dealer to be around for the long haul uh, because that's going to help keep the value of your boat higher, and there's several reasons for that. The third is the nationally advertised price, or it could be, uh, they, they'll abbreviate that as NAP, so if you see NAP on a, a sticker or online that's a nationally advertised price it's also a market advertised price or map pricing and you'll see that basically that is the the manufacturer the oem saying this is how much this boat is and you'll see pricing everywhere so you'll see that a lot with entry level type models where the manufacturer says hey your your margin is going to be what we dictate and it's typically going to be around 15 percent plus or minus or so. So that's that's the pricing. So let's take a look at some examples. And these are actually some uh, boat show stickers. And you can see that high MSRP with a big discount to retail. So this one has a $25,000 uh, boat show discount, which is about 25% discount down to $79,999. Now, that is, you know, the MSRP of 105. Nobody's selling that boat for MSRP. They're given a huge discount. So it looks like the reason they do this is it looks like they're giving you a huge discount and you feel really good about that purchase. OK, so that's the psychology they're trying to use there. Um, that's a Tidewater black fin again. And these are are more higher level boats. Uh, this black fin has a has a price of 209 um, actually, no, 238, 738. You can see it up at the top, Blackfin base boat price. So that doesn't account all the equipment. And then the MSRP with options, 261, 048. You can see that just above the uh, palm trees. And then the price, 209, 990. And then they've reduced it even more to 195, 990. So what is that, a 70 about a $70,000 discount uh, on this $260,000 boat. So that is high retail, big discount. So my gut tells me that they're probably at a 35% margin or so, um, and then they're dropping it down, and that 195, 990 is probably getting them 18, 17, 18%. These are boat show prices, and that's a, a pretty good target for a dealer to hit 15 to 20 percent um, on their their pricing now here's why they do it this way on the higher end boats is if they bring in a trade they need to have or they want to have the money so that they can put a value on your trade which makes you feel good about the boat okay so if you don't have a trade there may be a little bit more negotiation room because the, the number is what it is. That's just the price and they can come down a little bit more. If you do have a trade, that trade may only be worth, let's say $50,000 to them and they're gonna try to sell it for 60, just for easy math. They wanna make a 20% margin on their trade, which is reasonable in my opinion, okay? They've gotta bring it in, they've gotta recondition it, they've gotta do the fluids, they gotta you know make sure everything's right. Um, you know, maybe they'll spend some money on it. They've got to market it. They've got to assume it's going to take them six months to sell the boat or whatever their turn time is. And there's cost associated with that interest cost, uh, potential depreciation risk if something that they don't catch in the inspection. So they've got to have some room there. So they're going to give you 50 for it. But really, the value to them is only 45,000 but they want to show you 50 so that you feel good about the trade and you say yeah it's worth it for the convenience factor i know i could go sell it for 60 um hopefully but that convenience factor i'll pay that ten thousand dollars for convenience um and but reality it's actually fifteen thousand dollars and they, they do some kind of a shell game with the numbers i'll do another video and, and actually i've done another video talking about trades and how that works uh, which you can go watch on the on the channel but that's high msrp with a big discount to retail next is the lower msrp with a smaller discount to retail now some manufacturers you'll see grady white and outrage 
Um, these are premium level boats, you know, a, a 33 Outrage and a, a um, 251 Coastal Explorer. But if you look at the MSRP to the discount, you're only looking at a, a 30 some thousand dollar discount on the Whaler and a $12,000 discount, uh, what is that, $14,000 discount on the Grady. So there's no hard and fast rule on what they do, but typically competition is going to uh, use a similar strategy. So um, it, it's, it really just depends. But when you start seeing the show, the boat show prices is you can assume that they're putting their best foot forward. Okay. Now, maybe they say, hey, on these, we want even more room and there's more room for trades, which is a possibility. But this is probably somewhat close to what they're actually going to sell the boat for. Okay. So that's the second way they do it. Again, they don't want that retail price to get so high that if that price is out there, that it's going to say, oh, crap, I, I can't afford 400000 for this boat, uh, even though you could buy it for three twenty nine. But that's the second way they do it. Here's another example of the same manufacturer. If you look at the at the Regulator 23 and their their new 26 XO on this manufacturer or this dealer, the MSRP is 177 245 on the 230, which is a, a really popular boat for Regulator, um, that, but it's been around for a while. And they're giving a $22,000 discount plus a $4,000 discount. So it is at 26, 26, five in discounts on the 260 or 26 XO. They're at 166 and they're only given a $19,000 discount. So there's a, 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 what is that? Five, $6,000 gap. And the reason for that is that 26 XO was on back order they were limiting the number of boats that dealers can get and as a matter of fact for the 2020 season um, with my inside information they actually bumped up the price to the dealers on that 26 xo because it was so popular and they were so back ordered that you'll probably see even less of a discount in the future from dealers because they just can't get them and there there's a supply and demand effect that happens there's there's nobody that has a boat that people like as much. So they're super popular. They can only build so many. Um, and that's another reason why you can have a lower MSRP with a smaller discount uh, like you see on these two. Okay. So it's not always the same, even from manufacturer to manufacturer. Now, this is the one that you're seeing more and more of. It's the nationally advertised price, NAP or MAP, market advertised price. But essentially, that's the manufacturer going out and saying, this is the boat, this is the price, and then typically the, the base boat will be that price. And then you'll start adding options on, which the they may do it at the factory or they may do it as you or you buy the boat like that and then the dealer adds everything on for you and they can charge whatever they want for their installation and, and for the um have their markup on the equipment you see this this is the the Rabalo uh r160 so a 16 foot center console mako um on the this is a bigger one but mako uh, Bass Pro Shops, Cabela, Rabalo's doing it, um, Tracker Marine is doing it, which is Tracker, Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's, Mako are all part of the same organization. Um, uh, what is it called? White River. Um, you'll see it. Yamaha Jet Boat uses this pricing. It's been incredibly effective for them along with their, their unique jet drive system where, where they're clearly the best in class there. Um, over the last several years and this is hey the manufacturer setting the price and the dealers are really they're they're not encouraged to drop the price and, and partly because the manufacturers tell them not don't advertise a lower price than this this is the price of the boat um, but the margin is also very thin for the dealers um, based on where the manufacturer sets it okay so when you have the price there's the price that you see on the sticker so the 23495 is the nationally advertised price that likely does not include shipping charges dealer prep dock prep registration 
state and local sales tax, title, license, and registration. So there may be another thousand dollars, eighteen hundred dollars, um, or more. And then when you add sales tax on it, um, you know that is not the out the door price. There's other things that get added on it, and the the one that catches most people is the shipping and the dealer prep. So when when these nationally advertised boats show up, um, the the dealer may have to do some prep on it. They've got to put the batteries in. They've got to install the bimini top. They've got to do the shakedown. They've got to put the oil in. Uh, they may even have to rig the motor, um, get that put in. And, and that's real cost to the dealer and the manufacturer setting the price. So they allow them to set within a limit uh, a shipping amount, which is charged to the dealer uh, and that prep, um, that dealer prep fee as well. Okay. And then you have the dock prep, the registration, which are going to the dealer, the state and local taxes, which is going to the to the government, the titling, which is going to the government, license and registration is going to the government. So those are fees that are on top of it that um, typically are not negotiable. Maybe you can negotiate that dealer prep fee, but um, it, that that's a tough one. So there's that nationally advertised price. Now. There's some other things that you may want to know that's going on, and that's the relationship between the manufacturer and the dealer. The manufacturer may sell the boat for this amount, and the dealer will buy it for that, and they build their margin off that. That's that that 15 to 20 percent or so, kind of their target right now in that range. But there's some things going on in the back that allow the dealer to make a little bit more money. It's why sometimes a larger dealer can sell a boat for a little bit less, somebody that does a lot of volume with the manufacturer, and you'll see some difference in the in the pricing. Inventory financing support. So uh, a manufacturer may say, hey, we'll give you, we'll set you up with the financing um, to, to floor plan your inventory, and we'll subsidize that a little bit so that they can um, lower the cost of holding that inventory over a period of time. It may be a short-term situation. Inventory rebates. Uh, if there's a certain boat that has not sold for that dealer, uh, let's say it's a, a leftover, it's a, a 2020, um, a 2020, and it's uh, the 2021 seed is there, and, and they're just not moving it. The manufacturer may say, hey, we'll give you a little bit extra money on this boat um, and we'll take that off the next boat that you order to replace it. So that's a one-off. If you ever hear a dealer say, let me talk to my, let me talk to the manufacturer rep and see if I can get uh, any help on this. That's what they're doing. Uh, the carryover rebates. Um, it's kind of like those inventory rebates that for the, for the leftovers. Volume bonuses. If the dealer orders a certain number of boats, they can get a discount on those boats if they hit, let's say, 20. They, they order over 20 boats, they get a discount. If they pay cash, they get a discount. Um, th there are several ways that they can get discounts on their boats. And again, it allows one dealer to sell for a little bit less. Some manufacturers do that, some don't. It, it really just depends and they do it different ways. Uh, CSI bonuses. They may give a small bonus or a rebate um, for hitting certain customer service standards because the manufacturers know that the better their clients are taken care of, the more likely they're going to buy that boat again in the future. So your, your better, more premium brands that have a good reputation are the ones that do those types of things if they do them at all. And then advertising allowances or co-op programs. That's where the manufacturer says, hey, if you're going to put an uh, ad in Boating Magazine or your local Boating Magazine or you're going to run some Facebook ads, as long as you meet our guidelines for, for marketing, um, we will pay a portion of it, usually around 50%. Uh, we'll pay 50% of it, um, and that's another, another relationship that happens. This is all stuff that's behind the scenes. You'll never know about it except for those uh, inventory or carryover rebates. They may... They may talk to you about that a little bit. The other stuff is totally hidden and you have no way of, of um, accounting for that. It's just figured into the way they do business. Um, there's also uh, 
the engine manufacturers can have similar setups where if you're strictly a Mercury or Mercury Cruiser dealer, if you're strictly a Yamaha dealer for outboards, um, they may give you some bonuses just for uh, some advertising allowances, some other other money just for being exclusive. And if you bring if you bring a Yamaha and even a single Yamaha to compete or a single Volvo to complete with compete with the Mercruisers, um, you can lose that money and that can be significant for some of the larger dealers. So impacts on pricing and discount. One thing to understand when you are comparing boats to boat is there's a lot of things that can impact the price of the boat that you may not see this on. Uh, I, I hear this a lot on pontoons where somebody will say, why is this pontoon $30,000 more than that pontoon? And it's because one has a, a tri-tune with a 150, but everything everything is the same on the boat and the layout's the same size, but one has a 150 and one has a 300. Well, that's going to bump up the price significantly, or one has a... Um, you know, this engine and the other has the upgraded, that's going to impact the price significantly. The optional equipment, you know, wakeboard towers are five, seven, ten thousand dollar upgrades on some of these boats, um, canvas covers. So, you really need to know what's the optional equipment and, and how is that boat laid out so you can tell your buddy says, Hey, I bought this boat for 60 grand, and you're looking at it and they're saying it's going to be 65. Well, what's what's the real comparison? Are you compare apples to apples, or is there something significant about that boat that's different? Trailers, trailers are going to be five, seven, ten, twelve thousand dollars depending on the boat, and you need to know, you know, is that price with or without a trailer, uh, because that's going to have an impact. Something that's going to impact the discounts is the level of the dealer's inventory. So I, I'm recording this in 2020 where inventory is just, it's slim pickings out there. People are driving hundreds of miles to get a boat. They're ordering boats that aren't gonna be available for six months. Um, dealers are out of new boats in, in a lot of areas and, and bunch of models. Some are just completely out of new boats com totally. Um, they're gonna be less likely to discount in that environment than like let's say in 2010 2009 2010 when they had a bunch of inventory and they had a lot of leftover inventory uh, leftover is it's 2010 and you have 2008 and 2007 still on the lot that you need to sell so that level of inventory is going to impact the dealer discount and then if the manufacturer is going to give them any incentives to move that older inventory um, that's going to have a big impact so one dealer may be selling out of a certain model and they only have one left and it's you know it's may and they're going to say well we're not going to we're not going to discount that one as much as if they had four of those same models um and it was august so that time of year and the dealer's level of inventory matters and most dealers have been in business long enough that they kind of know where they should be and when they start need to start discounting so if you're really looking at getting the best deal you want to go later in the season or earlier in the season where you can get a leftover model or in that competitive environment of the boat show. And you can watch our video how to win at the boat show to um, get some tips there because that is a great time to buy. But that time of year is a big one uh, because as you get later in the season in, in the northern hemisphere, you know, the boats start selling in February, March, April, depending on when the when the weather warms up. Um, they're going strong May, June, Fourth of July is kind of the peak. It starts tapering down just a little bit to Labor Day, and then after Labor Day, for most markets, there are certain fishing boats that sell real well uh, in that. Um, there are certain areas of country that do real well in that late summer, early fall time frame. Uh, but then after you know October or so most of the boating in the northern hemisphere outside of Florida and and uh, Texas uh, is coming to a close and the dealers say well I can hold this boat back until February March April or I can give a bigger discount right now and let this go and again that time of year in the inventory there's a connection between those because if it's just one boat yeah they want to get rid of it but maybe their next one's not going to come in till a little bit later um, 
But the f later in the year and the more inventory they have, the more aggressive they're going to be on pricing and the, the better discount you're going to do. What I'll tell you, though, is if it's March and you want to get a boat, do you want to give up that whole season just to get a little bit of a discount or maybe a big discount, miss that whole year, and now that boat that you buy in November um, is basically a year older? Um, so, you know, it, it makes sense that they're discounting it because the value of it has truly gone down because of the of the time. But those are, are some of the things that impact price and impact the discount. So hopefully that was valuable for you. Remember, you can grab that toolkit, BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're always putting up new uh, content that's going to be valuable for you. Hit that little bell so you can get notified when it's available. YouTube's recommended some videos. And we have our magic money-saving method, which you really want to check out because it's going to help you save hundreds, likely thousands, and for some, even tens of thousands of dollars um, with a special insider technique um, that you can put to use. You can check that out there and get more information. Thanks for watching. Be sure to comment, ask your questions, and be happy to answer those for you in the comments.